We'll work on a 2007 Chevy Avalanche. The issue is that the remote start stopped working. So we're gonna diagnose this no start condition with the remote start. Now it'll crank over just fine with the key and the ignition, but when you go through the remote start function, uh, it just doesn't uh, start up. So I haven't diagnosed anything or really got into anything, but I did just gather some information. So let me show you what I found. This may turn into a quick tip video. Uh, it may not, just depending, but let me show you the information I gathered. So this is the information from Chevy on how their remote start system works. Now this is factory remote start. So from the dealer, uh, from Chevy, so not aftermarket that we're dealing with. So you can pause it here, read all this if you want, but pretty much it's just saying that uh, to activate the remote start, you lock the door and then press and hold the remote start uh, button on the um, on the key fob. So that's pretty much it. And then it tells you how long it lasts, 10 minutes, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so what did I want to show you? Okay, so the hood ajar. So that's important. The hood needs to be closed for this to operate. Um, this is what I wanted to show you. So for this to operate, you go through the thing on your key fob and it sends a signal to the BCM, the body control module. And then the body control module uh, will check these things to see if we're, we're good to go. Are we A-OK? -okay? Go ahead and proceed to send a signal to the ECM for a start request. These conditions must be met. All vehicle doors must be closed. A valid hood ajar switch closed signal is present. Doors are locked no hazards on power mode is correct which i'm not sure what that is but maybe no key in the ignition or something but it needs to know that it's turned off i guess no content theft deterrent alarm triggers so there can't be any alarms going off and the vehicle is not in valet mode so that's what the bcm looks for looks for all these things so we're looking good then the bcm sends a signal to the uh, ecm or the engine control module and then the engine control module will not send a request if any of these are met. So if the vehicle speed is greater than zero, it will not start the engine. Or if it thinks it's greater than zero. If the transmission is not in park, or if it thinks it's not in park. Uh, engine temperature too high, low oil pressure. If the check engine light is commanded on, crank time like it didn't start, uh, excessive engine speed, blah, 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 blah. So just looking through what the BCM needs, and then looking through what the ECM needs, let me show you what the scan tool brought up. So I just did a health report, so it talked to all the modules capable of speaking, and there's lots of codes, but notice this. Engine control module has a code for the throttle position sensor performance. Now, when I started it up, that check engine light stayed on. So it has a check engine light on. It's possible that that check engine light ECM sees the check engine light and goes, hey, we're not gonna start the car. That's a possibility, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't cleared that code, but that would be something I would do. Clear the code, see if it, it starts. Throttle position sensor performance, that'll definitely set right away, or it should set right away. That's a very important code. Oh, and then the driver door switch, uh, integral switch malfunction. So I don't know, I'll have to check, but it's possible that it doesn't know the door is closed. And remember, we saw on the list of things it needs, it needs all the doors closed. So that's a possibility. We can look into that. Um, passenger door switch. It got a bunch of codes for the passenger door. Uh, I think that was it. I don't know about the hood, so I need to close the hood. I'm, I'm doing work under the hood at the moment, just changing spark plugs. But I need to see, does the BCM see the hood door so so I just need to make sure are all the doors shut according to the BCM are all the hood latch and all that stuff according to the BCM are all those good if they are then I would suspect that this check engine light is causing our no start with the uh, remote start feature it's possible so let's dig into it if that's the case then this is a you know just a quick tip video if yours isn't working this may be the cause if it's not any of these then we'll continue further down the line and try to figure this thing out. 
Right, so let's go into body control module because that's the direct link between the key fob to body control module, then body control module to ECM, then ECM to start. So let's go with body control module first. Read data stream. Now there were no fault codes in the BCM. Doors. We want to check. Um, rear, rear. It's only left rear. Right rear ajar. Hmm. But I don't have anything for the front. Well, anyway, let's look. Let's look at these real quick. So doors are closed in the rear, and I imagine the fronts are easy because uh, once you open it, the lights come on, and you close it, lights go out. So, and it's the same with the passenger side too. So we know that the doors are closed. Um, so that's not going to be our issue. Power mode, accessory relay command, run, crank, reference, off, crank. Let's not look at that at the moment. Let's go to remote start. We'll just go ahead and select everything. Let's see what we're looking at. Battery voltage is good. Uh, no faults in the brake transmission interlocked. Okay, content theft mode false. I assume that means there's no issues with it. I'm sitting in it so it recognizes me. Uh, engine control module crank abort. True. That's important. So the engine control module stopped the cranking of the engine. Hazard lamp inactive. Hood ajar closed. So the closed switch is active. And the open switch is inactive. So we know the hood is good to go. Ignition switch, fault, key ignition, yes. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's interesting. Power mode. Just select all of them. Accessory relay command on, on. Current power mode is run. So that's because I'm in the run position. If I were to change this to accessory, now it'll say accessory. So key out accessory. Ignition run crank inactive. Because I'm not trying to crank the engine. Key in. Off run crank reference 5.36 volts. 5.3 run relay command on run crank on. Okay, so no issues with that. But, so this is what I'm gathering. Engine control crank abort. This is what I'm gathering. Is that the BCM, the body control module, is getting a signal from the key fob. It says, hey, everything looks good. I did my check, doors are closed. Everything I need to see is good to go. So it sends a crank signal to the ECM. ECM says, oh, thanks for the crank signal. Let me do my little checks. And it says, uh-oh, we got a problem. So it aborts the cranking. Why would it abort the cranking? Well, remember its list? Check engine light. So let me clear the code on the check engine light and see if the remote start will work. I'm not going to clear anything else, just the engine. Let me go to um, get this on video. So P0121, if that code doesn't come back. But let's clear it. And then cycle the key. Turn it back on, and then let's read fault code and see if it came back right away. Okay, no trouble codes. So let's get out of the vehicle and see if the remote start will, will actuate. Alright, so now let's do the remote. So lock, and hold this, and there we go. It's working. Well, there you go. The check engine light was all it was. Now, I did take it for a quick spin to see if that check engine light would come back on. Uh, the light's not on, but the code uh, did appear, so it may need to fail twice before the actual light uh, kicks on. But this code does need to be addressed for this remote start to continue to operate. So, understanding the system, how it operates, how it works, uh, was vital in this diagnosis. We saw that the body control module needed a few 
a checklist, a few things that it looked for, and then also the ECM had a checklist, things that it looked for before sending uh, the start signal out to crank the vehicle over. So hopefully this uh, was helpful. Again, just a little quick tip, if you have a check engine light on or any one of those checklists, if there's an issue with that checklist, you know that could prevent the remote start from, from starting uh, as well. So thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, see you on the next one.